Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 49. I am Ryan, the GM. It's the 22nd of May 2020, and here are the players. Hello, I'm Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the half of Druid. How's it going? I'm Sean. I play Bastiel, the Wolfforged Cleric. Hello, I'm Scott. I'm playing a half orc paladin called Crumbar. Hi, I'm Sophie. I play Kitless Anastasia, a wood elf rogue. Hi, I'm Stuart. I play Reach, a half elf monk. Excellent. Right, so let's have a look at what we did last time. Who remembers? Um, we met the Dwarf King. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember his name? Uh, yeah, I do actually, because I have it written down. It is uh, Patrovages. Petrovis? Petrovis? The attempt is good. Yeah, it, I mean, that's way better than normal. It, you mm -hmm. it is it, that. You can't read your own writing, gotcha. Patrovangis. No, no. Yes. King, King Donor Patrovangis. Yes. Yes. That one. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, we got put in a cell for a bit. Yeah, for a bit. Um, then we were. For a second, there I heard cellar. Like my brain so I'm like <laughs> put in the cellar to cool water. We wine. <laughs> oh man, I'd love some wine. Um, yeah. Um, then we went into pretty much. Uh, oh, Stu, you're echoing for us, by the way. Uh, is our still off your load? Try that. Go for it, Scott. Hello. Yeah. Then we kind of went into uh, Smo's cave. Because it was like all the gold, and then it's like, ah, oh, Kingy, hello. That mm -hmm. room was quite cool. Um, talk to him for a bit. Yeah, we're still getting echo. <laughs> it's from Stu. Me? All right. huh? Yeah, it's like. I don't know what else I can do. Uh. Unknown. It's, it, it's new. It's a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe turn up your gate a wee bit. Um, sorry, I can't remember where it was. Uh, I know we talked to the That's king. Worse. I just can't remember what about. I know I talked to him about the vampire guy. Um, mm -hmm. We asked him for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was yeah. very cryptic about if he was going to help. Yeah, he mulled it over, and then by the end of the session, he called us back in. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out what he thinks about our plight. Oh yeah, because you kept flashing them, and by so, that I mean opening up your mouth and showing them your big flashy orb. That's right. I waste no time. Her tonsils <laughs> meant to do this. <laughs> yeah. So, th this is true. I mean, I know you're not a doctor, but here, look at this. Mm. <laughs> maybe a doctor, maybe you know Doctor Donner Petrovengis, right? I mean, doctors can be kings. Kings mm -hmm, can mm -hmm. be doctors. Ah, King Sir Doctor Knight. <laughs> yes. Good idea, mm -hmm. actually. Um, but yes. So, uh, anything else happened last time? Uh, Crumbar's so still tripping a bit as well. That was the thing. What? You were I'm still. Not... You were tripping last time. Yeah. What was that? In the cell. And on the truth. Error moss, maybe. Oh, yeah, right, sorry. Oh. I thought you meant like trapping like I was still drunk mm. kind of thing. I'm like, am I? No, right, okay, yeah, no, I get, I get what you mean now. Scott or Crumba? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, Ryan, this is getting a bit too meta. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. It's all too real. So. I think uh, yeah. Uh, I thought everything you remember from last time. Well, I traded languages a bit, worked on that goal. Uh, mm -hmm. We discarded um, the other goal of getting word to Gil for now. Shelf that. Did and we're going to take a more active approach towards the vampire situation slash uh, locating the red dragon. Interesting. Let me go get that exact piece of paper. Here we go. Good. It's the session 48 notes that have the, the progress tracker attached to it. So, there we go. Fully armed and operational GM. 
<laughs> yes, I guess we'll look at Goldstein every day. Mm -hmm. uh, anything need to change? Uh, get to the right page. Uh, find a way and how to get Arian down. I'm I'm still quite happy with what we've got there. Mm -hmm. That's what I was gonna say. We took the time being thorough with it at the end of last session, so I was mm. really. Yeah. Any other commentary, Tofi, Stu? Any changes you want to make? No, no changes. Good. good. No, nope. happy with these ones still. Good, good. Yeah, I guess let's get stuck in there. Nice and easy. Yeah. So, use. We're left. I, at the end of the last session where your stuff was brought back to you guys I, and then the attendant said that the king will see you now I, and to dress for him essentially I, and then so that we jokes on them because we don't exactly have a... well the implication was the fact that they dumped all your stuff mm -hmm. so it's yeah. up basically yeah like these are now allowed to have your things so, oh yeah, there's property that you had uh, yeah, stolen. Yeah, they were not ours. Yeah, those were removed. Hey, I didn't realise at the beginning where we were, so... It's like, hey, what we a coincidence. Just open a and <laughs> suddenly books, and, you know. I mean, what? how could I say no? I mean, by like, saying these aren't mine. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> that. <laughs> I just got like, hey, what a coincidence that we happen to have the book that you're missing. Oh. Yeah, you, of course you can have it. Well, gift. There you go, gift. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. I am, I'm assuming... Did I get back oh. the pages I ripped out of the mother book? Uh, yeah, because that, <laughs> that wasn't Dwarven property, so... Oh, okay, mm. cool. Yeah. Oh, no, because we're going to need that to speak to the king guy. Or about vampires. I've got a note about that. It's like, remember Kitty? Remember Kitty has papers? Remember Kitty might not want to divulge those with anyone else? I know Arya um, wanted to show the deny king it. about the sure. So. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, a good, that's an important thing for that um, distinction is, yeah, would Kitty necessarily have told anyone she learned a ritual about unbinding? I can't remember. I feel like you have mentioned it. Well, they'd have probably seen me ripping pages no. out. Yeah, but not necessarily the reason. Big mm -hmm. library. Yeah, I think I might have looked for books to help Cromber out of his coma, and then I asked Kitty if she found anything because she did the investigating on that, and she probably I think she told me what the book was and what she found. Yeah, I mean, there's an easy way to answer this. It's pour through that session, but I'm not yeah. going to do that. So. <laughs> easy way. Yep, literally the answer is literally recorded, and it's on YouTube as we speak. So mm -hmm. if anybody at home listening wants to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and you know, maybe just leave it on in the background and then occasionally check it because YouTube now stops you every so often and asks if you're still there. Do that. Does it? Yeah. Space around the, I hate that yeah. about Netflix, let alone about YouTube. But it does. You can project it. Thing. You can cast onto your TV, then close the browser. It will stay open. Because uh, the, the browser is telling the TV to pause. Yep. Let's talk oh. more about it. Uh, him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the... Yeah, these are left in the room, I guess, getting ready. So, any discussion before you are escorted out? Uh, ask them if we can read the books, because uh, we were just uh, wanting for knowledge. These have been left in the room alone to get ready, in private. Right. Um, so it's more we'll about discussion, the discussion yeah. with you guys then, yeah. Um, I'd just be happy that I have my weaponry back, so I'd just be like, loading up all my shit. Oh yeah. 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 I just like the idea of like them bringing everything in, and like everyone else has got like this little pile of stuff, and then like three guys have to haul in all the crap that I've mm -hmm. got. It's like, <laughs> it's like on a mining cart, where <laughs> yeah, like the rest of them get brought on like a tray kind of thing, and they're mine with like a wheelbarrow. <laughs> there are much uh, sweatier looking dwarfs that carried those ones yeah. in. Yeah, very unimpressed. <laughs> You know, maybe that because they're very strong. You know, maybe they're just very strong, and you have this little like moving pile of things that's getting closer and closer and closer to you, and eventually it lowers the ground, and from underneath it, <laughs> one of the guys emerges and like scampers away. Oh, it's a bit like that um, 
oh, what's that game where you pull the straws out and it's like I just remove one dagger oh, and it all just collapses around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have anything in my inventory that would really help me prepare for a meeting with a king, so I'm good to go. Yeah. At the door. I'd say the same. You'd probably be waiting on me. Like, oh, they've just messed up the order of everything. And there's just me actually just literally shoving things in. Like, there's an order to this? Everyone's like, order? Yeah. <laughs> that, that word exists. It's our vocabulary. What? So, what do you call it? Um, well, you know where everything is, but it's a mess. Mm -hmm. But you know where it is. Yeah, organized chaos. Mm -hmm. or organized chaos. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that, that is the story of my life. <laughs> big, big mood. Yes, I like the idea that it's like, yeah, well, this left hand of stuff I've picked up goes on the left side, obviously. That's the order. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Them's the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I think you just get ready and then I guess you just leave the like in the waiting room that you've been kind of kept in. Go the... back and grab whatever food left. Yeah, right. obviously. Yeah. Stuff your face <laughs> full of the scones. Yeah. Um, and obviously the attendant kind of like regards all of you and just kind of like nods with like a hmm, very kind of just dwarven noises and off they walk and he, he's got a slightly different route this time so mm -hmm. whether or not you are heading back to the uh, you know the big throne room type thing it's hard to tell I am um, mm. the two outlanders of the group can tell it is a different route instantly I am um, the rest maybe it takes a bit longer to work that out but sure yeah, the place is obviously just a maze of like corridors. Yeah, because we went places. left and left, and then and now they're taking us right, right and straight ahead and left, so it's different totally. Mm -hmm. And there's like seven ups and a down, despite all the downs and ups that you've had previously. So yeah, so all of the different navigation that he's going, he's going another wander for about half an hour, and then I he's come to big kind of big stone doors again, surprise, and uh, the the attendant pushes them forward, and they they kind of like you can hear the mechanisms within the doors assisting and. They're opening up and yeah, you walk inside and there's a massive big kind of like fancy piece of like very polished stone I am um, as a table in the centre and it seems to have been done up for like a meal. I am um, and he says, Please sit Is there is there food on the table already or nope. is it just Nope. Uh oh kinda of walk up and sit down and go, ah, finally getting that wine, are you? <laughs> Who is it you say that to? <laughs> Sorry, say that to the king. Oh, God. <laughs> King's not in the room. Oh, I thought you said it was the king that said that. Sorry. No, the attendant. The oh, attendant. right. In That's... that case, I'll sit down and say nothing. <laughs> That's why the why, like, the, sorry, the, like, the names <laughs> and the titles, king and attendant, are different. Um mm. But you need to remember there's the, what you say and then there's what I hear you say. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I've spent 49 sessions having to translate a lot of that. Um, <laughs> like when you go, I heard you said it was the thing I need to happen. I'm like, I don't think that's what I said, Scott. Um, but it's what I said you said, so yeah. it makes it... Uh, but yes, so the attendant waits for I love you, Scott. You are lovely. Do you all go in and take your seats? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There is no like specific like assigned seating either. Right? Just it's you know a big table with a bunch of, oh, bunch okay. of seats. And um, yeah, I'm so. just gonna assume that 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 Kitty and Crumb are gonna want to be somewhere towards the middle of the table so that their arms can reach the most <laughs> number of uh, dishes and food. Just saying, <laughs> I've got a hunch. That's how I see them in my head. Yeah, and. Uh, the attendant, I just says, you will be supplied with um, drinks momentarily, and he leaves and closes the doors. And you hear the big thunk of the big stone doors, and then all of a sudden there's this kind of like weird, almost eerie silence to the room. Am I doing anything? Any awkward echo, movements echo, in, in the echo. in the chairs? No. Um, chairs are obviously all carved of stone. Let's face it. <coughs> yeah. Same stone as the tables carved of. Big fancy kind of polished, kind of almost marble. So very uncomfortable. Then we'll be shifting uncomfortably, I imagine, after like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> very cool to sit on as well. 
Um, it's, yeah. it's a very air conditioned room. And and eventually you just hear like a kasunk from up the back of the, the room and uh, one of the side doors open and in walk like a whole bunch of like clearly serving dwarves. Um, the the catering staff as it were. And they walk in and they put down various like crafts and of different things on the table and they uh, different goblets and stuff are sat down. All of them ridiculously encrusted in crazy jewels and uh, yeah, they then just take a position at the outskirts of the the walls and they stand there and then uh, in walks the king at the far side. Before he walks in, I, having seen, you know, the drooled and crusted food dishes and whatever, I have a I, I look straight at Kitty and mouth don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the process of trying to slide something into a pocket and put it back quickly like no. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. And then, uh, King walks in. Kind of like nods to one of the servants that's at the side, and they run off and get like, you know, some food brought in. And uh, the king sits down and then just kind of looks at everyone, just kind of relatively sternly. And he says, Thank you for joining me. Okay, now, Crumbar. Thank you for inviting us to <laughs> dine with you. And I get, as, as, like, that's getting finished, I was like, now Crumbar's like, looks up where Gren and goes, ah, we're having that bottle of wine now. We're having many bottles of wine. And he gestures to all the carafes that are sat across the table. Um, and, I, and, like, you know, my face just grins even more. And then he kind of like looks over to one of the kind of servants, kind of like almost disappointedly, and they run over and they like grab one of the crafts and start pouring it into his glass. And he kind of then just like motions with his arm down the table, and then all the servants run and like grab like jugs essentially and start pouring pouring you guys drinks. So everybody's got two goblets, and one's got like water in it, the other one's got some some alcoholic liquid. It's um. Not quite wine, though. It's more mead in texture. Ooh, mm. I like mead. Yeah. Um. Life. I'll give mine to Crumba because obviously I can't <laughs> consume. Would they have given you just like a thing of oil, maybe? <laughs> like a generic oh, oil can. <laughs> Like oh no, I could I love a bit of ten W thirty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in this game we had W D forty as a joke before? I feel like it yeah, was. Yeah, it was yeah. W Dwarf Wizard, forty. It was thing, Wizard yeah. Dwarf forty. Yeah. Oh, bless us, yeah. Yeah. yeah, ridiculous. But yeah, I was like, I thought it was this game. Yeah, <laughs> nonsense. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, who tries what first? The mead or the uh, the war? I don't go for the meat. Yeah. And yeah it is, no yeah. constitution. <laughs> no, no. It's just, um, you've, I mean, have you ever had dwarven meat before? I'm asking, obviously, Reach, not Stu. No, I've had, I was basically, I've had Stuart meat. Yeah. Before, uh, but other than that, uh, I've never had dwarven meat. Because uh, uh, I was going to say, your mentor was dwarven, right? So. Yeah. That's a chance would, of it, but would have, you know, would, homemade stuff. Uh, but, yeah, would it have been like a uh, sneaky bottle under a still under like the, the monastery or something then? Yeah, um, I would say so, yeah. Um, probably not up to palace standard, I would mm -hmm. expect. But yeah, that's, like, yeah. Blades of the Plain uh, definitely had a wee cheeky, you know, yeah, meat machine somewhere. I can't I imagine a dwarf lasting long without the odd mm -hmm. triple. So, yeah. Yeah, Even pure, a paladin. pure of body, uh, pure of mind, pure of meat. Yeah, I like yes. it. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So you've maybe it's maybe um quite like nostalgic for you then drinking that. Um mm -hmm. and obviously maybe there is that obvious kind of understanding that it's clearly better. Quality. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Like maybe it was just like absolute kind of alcohol ah, ass. That's all many tastes like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Flavor, not just the kick. Mm -hmm. And what about everybody else? 
Obviously, the best deal hands his over to Crumbert. Uh, hand the meat over. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll hang fire the now um, for what I'm wanting to do. Okay. Okay, would you uh, go for first? The water or the... Uh, oh, the meat, definitely. Mead, uh, yep, and again, it's just... It's pretty strong. Um, something that's probably got the same kick is something akin to absinthe. It just doesn't have the aniseed taste to it. Um, it's got like a kind of sweet kind of honey taste to it. Um, but it's definitely got a kick to it. Perhaps two kicks. I, um... I mean, is it's not she... to make, but you know, it's good. Yeah. Is this where she finds out it's just the servant behind her kicking her chair? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about Arya? I don't think Arya would have had this before, or to be honest, many other various kinds of alcohol. I was going to say, that's, that was my question, because so like, that's why you're given water and mead as a choice. Like, you get both, you get a, I mean, a goblet of both. She can always combine them and I mean, end up with something that tastes nice, but is, you know, really? slightly more uh, lightweight uh, suited. It's up to you. You tell me what you're, so, what you're drinking. So she'll, probably have like, <laughs> she'll probably have, like, a sip of the, the meat. She'll realize just how strong it is. She'll have, like, a sip of the water, but then immediately regret the so, fact that the taste of meat is going from her mouth, and then she'll have a bit more of the meat, and so, then she'll have a bit more of the water. Slow down. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> so you have a sip of the mead, and yes, the strength of it hits you. And then you go and take a drink of the water, and the mead taste is gone instantly. Well, it wouldn't be gone, gone. Either. It's gone instantly. Oh. And there is the nicest tasting water you have ever had. Funky. Yeah. Like Damn it, now even more I want to combine refreshing. the two and see what happens when you combine these two. <laughs> Explodes. It's, it's like it. Yeah, it's like what happens if Mentos you put lithium in water. No, Mentos and Sorry. Diet Coke. That's <laughs> how they make dwarf bread edible. Yeah. <laughs> Just really nice filtered water, let's face it. Um, but yeah, so you have that kind of moment where you think, mm, actually, maybe the water tastes better than the meat. Um, yeah. But yeah, so everybody sits, he's, he's going to get into that, and then yeah, Crumber, you wanted to uh, say something? Yeah, so I would just be like that, like lifting up, like lift up the goblet like in my right hand and look at it and be like, ah, Dwarven Mead, not had this in ages, and as I'm lifting it up to my mouth, my hand just starts shaking, and I just drop the goblet, and it just like crashes on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I've just kind of got a bit of a, you know, shocked look on my face. Okay. Uh, the king uh, sits his goblet down and uh, motions to one of the, the people against the wall and they come and like pick up the goblet and like somehow magically the, the place is clean again very quickly through the perfect service of the dwarven servants. And then uh, the king just, once that's dealt with, and they're back against the wall, and like your cup's back on the, the table and it's refilled, you then has. Is there something ailing you? <laughs> this bag. <laughs> uh, funny choice of words there. You mean nothing. <laughs> 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 I just be like, um, like, kind of like, snap my, like, give my head a wee shake and snap back to reality almost. And just be like, oh, sorry, no, fine, just got distracted a wee bit, I guess. Clumsy yeah. of me. As you say that as well, he goes, yes, it's a very nicely decorated room. I don't get the opportunity to use it often. As he's starting to like, you know, almost self-congratulate himself on his choice of venue. Can you de can you describe the room to me? Yes, dwarven and opulent. What does that mean? This last bit. I know what dwarven means. So but what's opulent, very is like, rich. It's like when somebody is spending more money on something to look like it's had money spent on it than it needs to. Showing off, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'll just 
I would just be like, yes, it's it's quite breathtaking. It's just clearly taking my attention. Out. It's clearly taking my attention. And uh, like, is there something to read from Crumbar? Right? Is there like enough going on with Crumbar that that's obviously bullshit in the sense that? You've got something else in your mind that somebody would be able to justifiably roll things like. Oh, oh inside. yeah, like um, maybe I don't know if the king would might is pick up on it as much, but obviously the party know that it's clearly like the same type of lie that I've been, like the lie that I've been telling, where it's just been like, nah, I've had a, this. I have a sword, mate. When uh, Basti was mm-hmm. asking about my axe, you know, it's just like. Well, well, I think the fact that you dropped alcohol is the part people would worry about in the party. Yes, right? yeah. yeah, exactly, because they're like, we know Crumbar. Which, Crumbar, Crumbar literally drank random bottle of wine. Maybe wine, yeah. <laughs> Maybe wine, yes. <laughs> and now he is turning down what is possibly the best meat in existence. Mm. Wasting alcohol, you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It says, is there something more to your liking I could get the servants to fetch for you. And I'll just be like Um I I'll 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 be fine with what we what is provided, thank you. Okay, just like he slowly but... kinda nods his head but he doesn't say anything to that. He's kinda maybe mm-hmm. too busy waiting on his, his food because he's like we ordered a half an hour ago, why is it still not here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is there any more from Crumbar? Is there anybody else at the table? Like, give him like some strange looks, or like, when they probably give it. him a side eye. Like, okay, this is strange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crumbar <laughs> oh, just yeah. uh, reach and grab up a, or grab a cup, or a goblet, or whatever they are. Mm-hmm. But which one? Dun dun dun. <laughs> I think it's just a phrase. Crumbar will reach. Is the phrase that really confused me. It's like, well, he. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you trying to have a scene with Stu? Because, I mean, to be yeah. Cr- words. Will ex- Crumbar will extend his his appendage out and oh lift what? up another <laughs> goblet. Yeah. Hopefully, his hand, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep it to the imagination. Mm. Yeah, oh, dear. <laughs> so, like, yeah, here we are. Um, beyond that, though, you've got. The king just kind of waiting then, and he says, Once the meal is concluded, we shall discuss your requests. Is he just addressing that to the whole table yep. then? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, like... yeah okay. This isn't like Crumbar and the band. This is the party <laughs> that includes Crumbar. The Crumbards. Yay! Maybe when you retire, um, sing about your crazy journeys. It was <laughs> all food songs. Um, but yeah. Oh, what was what was me and Katie's place like restaurant going to be called again? I actually don't remember. Glug and something. Yeah, was it was it? the glug and yeah. the scorpion kebab. No, it was definitely um, the glug and something. The yeah. Glug and something. Wow. Oh, I can't remember. Nah, me neither. Good yeah. times. Like lug and munch, maybe something like that. Yeah. Probably. But okay. anyway. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. We're just having a wee sentry's rest, are we, Bastille? Mm-hmm. I think if you can do it for like ten minutes. Well, I feel like you could. Like <laughs> at some point, you need to start going in there, right? So. Mm. I feel like. Stand by. Yeah. I love how we're just sitting at dinner and you're like turret mode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to interrupt because I, you know, it's still royalty. So I think the fact that I can do this, it's it's a probably good chance to do it. Just like chill there and wait patiently. Yeah. And I think um, maybe while they're waiting then, after he's said that to the group, maybe um, like he'll start like tapping his fingers on the, the stone. And he'll look down the table, and he'll see Bastiel like just no, like having had handed the cups over uh, <laughs> previously. And maybe he'll be like, is there something we could acquire for you? Any motions down the table with like a like an open hand? 
Yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's all right. Judas sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Master Brew Blaze craftsmanship. That'll be fine, thank you. Uh, I've eaten. Uh, I haven't eaten much else but knowledge for a very long time, and that seems to suit me well. Hashtag nerd. <laughs> he kind of like you know, slowly and says, "Yes, I am fortunate. My books were not recovered with bite marks." And he kind of just <laughs> he like he makes a noise that you can't tell if he's like chuckled or if he's cleared his throat. Well, <laughs> right. Sorry. When you, yeah, when you I'll just laugh. Person. Take it for what it is. Yeah, because he's he's you can't tell if he's making light of that situation or if he's just reminding you like you stole my books, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's obviously been brought to his attention at least. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Scott, you were asking a question. Yeah, I was gonna just wondering. See, Warforged. I know they don't need to eat, but can they? I just, well, I imagine they yeah, can, like, like they probably, go, right? They probably could, but like, they need to clean themselves out, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a skeleton eating food. Yeah. It's going to fall right through. I mean, <laughs> probably clean you out, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gum up the works. Yeah. You just hear hissing <laughs> as it hits the energy source. Yeah. <laughs> it's be like, oh, who fed the wolf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining, reek. like, you know, owls. Because you know, owls like uh, 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 have pellets. I just thought it was super unrelated for a second there. I'm just imagining owls. Digest. <laughs> so, it, anything he would try to actually physically eat would come back up, but obviously it would come all burnt oh, and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's an oven. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, baked. Same um, thing. All vegetables, then. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so uh, anything else happen while these are waiting on food arriving? Uh, I think everyone's scared to piss them off. <laughs> what was that? Everyone's scared to annoy the king, so I, I know I want to wait there patiently. <laughs> why, why is the assumption you'll annoy the king? Right? Why is that the default <laughs> assumption? Because he's a king. He doesn't have to put up with shit. Yeah, and yet he's having dinner with you guys, so... I know, right? It's almost Ash. like he's putting up with us. Uh, ask him about the white, the white dragon. I was going to ask him a few other things. Oh, yeah, first, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, if, go ahead, guys. Yeah, we're, we're... After we leave here, we're going to be heading to find the white dragon. Do you know where we would find it? He's kind of like swirling his goblet, looking into it. Um, and he kind of looks up and he kind of shakes his head so he goes, dark days, looking for the white, actively seeking out dragons ha huh. it's preferable to seeking out the red directly yes. but they are dark days and he kind of just shakes his head side to side and he's like this is folly to seek out those dragons no disrespect to your and he kind of like he hesitates on the word and he kind of just like nods and then just starts drinking out of his <laughs> goblet as if that was somehow unavoidable um, the drinking part and, <laughs> and he kind of like you know wipes his his mouth and his beard when he stops drinking and apparently that's you know be enough for him to have replied is there any like kind of reply to that? Because he was kind of saying like, I don't mean any offense to your dragon guy that you clearly serve, since four of you are in golden armor. But mm. yeah, mm. And just are obviously all sat in it. There are dark days and dark days call for desperate measures. Desperation breeds fools, but we can do a few fools down south to fight. <laughs> Okay. Again, he does that thing where he kind of clears his throat, um, and he says, "This seems to be encroaching on the topics of post-dinner yeah. discussion." And he kind of just nods yeah. at you, and he says, "I will think 
on your pursuit of dragons. But until then, and then he kind of just like he, cl he clicks his fingers, and like one of the other servants waiting runs into like where clearly the kitchens are located. Um, but yeah, like if anyone's got anything else to ask him before dinner, yeah. Um, yeah. Guys, the, related. do you think I was going to say, do you think I should press him about the vampire the now and about the bit of paper kit he's got, or should we wait till after good times? Uh, let's soften him up a bit over dinner. And then... Soften him up, okay. Yeah. I will play my pan flute and serenade him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, wait, go. Hang off that then till after dinner times. Yeah, thanks. No. Um. I feel like like I should like ask him stuff about you know forge in general and stuff. What are you clicking? Yeah. I can only hear clicking from you, Scott. Can you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like yeah. you're clicking. So your mouse. How, yeah. how loud is my mouth? I'm uh, going through the uh, thingy. The Quest log, making, uh, you know, the one that I've made mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Going to that. Can't just try to work out what else could the dwarf help us with? Yeah, no, I'm just like, I'm just, just like looking for things to talk about. Like, I was like, hmm, do I want to talk to him, ask him about maybe if he's heard of Celeste, if he knows anything about Eremos or Magna? Because um, I'm right in saying that the Dwarf King and Magna don't get on, do they? I mean, they both call themselves kings, right? So mm. yeah, um. um. In fact, this is this is one no ask him actually. Um, will be like, a you know just like as more like chomping away and stuff. I'll be like, so, Oradak, how is it you two came to know each other? Okay, like nods. He says. It is a, a story that takes me back some some years. How is it you came to know Oradak Dorath? We were just we were looking for um what are they called, what are they called um, the people who like oh. value stuff. An appraiser. <laughs> An appraiser. Folk. An appraiser. An appraiser. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Ryan is no. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking at an, we were looking for an appraiser, and uh, we found Ordak, who was quite interesting to meet. He laughs. Possibly the first time you've ever seen him laugh. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd I'd probably give that kind of laugh along kind of yeah. thing when it's like oh he's laughing I should laugh too kind of thing. Yeah, that's very kind of abruptly as if he couldn't not mm -hmm. laugh at that. And he's like, yes, I would I would say that is a very accurate way to describe Mister Durath as a a curiosity to this world, and he kind of like. Takes a big I, swig I, of his, uh, his meat. As he said, I'll be like, curiosity? I've, I must admit, I've never seen anyone that you see me like pause for a minute and they're like, like him before. What is he exactly? And he kind of like, he raises an eyebrow through his uh, drinking of his goblet and he sits it down and he's like, one of a kind. And he kind of just uh, nods towards you and says, It seems like your um, companions would know something about that level of rarity. And then he kind of just looks slowly around the room at everybody. And I'll kind of, uh, like Braille, I'll just kind of run my fingers over the maker's mark behind my ear. Yeah. And think. <laughs> I was going to say, like... Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Bastille, keep going. Yeah, just um, kind of 
think on how to bring this up or how to get a lead on that little mm. little D. And what was that, Scott? Yeah, I was going to say, like, as a gesture to the party, I would probably look at uh, Bastille just being like, yeah, this is a rare one as well. And he can look at a dwarf king, Mr. Petrovengis himself. He's, he sits there and he kind of lets out some kind of air, like a sigh, and he's like, well, Oradak Dorath is not originally from here. You may have noticed this in his um, uniqueness. Another realm? Dora kind of like tilts ever so slightly to like look down the table. Like maybe past some of the, the jugs that have been scattered. And he says, Speak your mind. Are there other realms? And can I just like slowly nods? It would appear so. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. Mm. What does everyone else think about that? Is this a known thing that there are other dimensions and shit? They all um, looked into hell rip open in an abyss full of demons, so I don't know if that's a big shock to them, but they can tell yeah. you themselves. Yeah, I mean, also the whole... We know Celeste is from a different realm. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting to piece things together about Ryan's other games, so... <laughs> we ever get told about Callum's tea with the uh, Wizard King? Uh, yeah, I think he did. He said, and I think Callum had met. Like, well. like, that was in a kind of different realm. Yeah, I think Eric did say it was mm -hmm. in like a, a realm the king had made, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a pocket dimension, a pocket bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Keep my burb in a little pocket dimension. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. There are so many dimensions. Right? At least three. <laughs> Yay, triangles! <laughs> That's <laughs> with 2D. <laughs> with three sides. <laughs> it made sense in my head. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Uh, um. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Oprah. <laughs> but yes. Um, right. Um... So what's everybody else's like kind of viewpoint on that? What's Arya's like vibe about the other realms thing? Because I mean, something from another realm climbed out of hell and into your bow. So mm. that's a thing. That is a thing. Mm. Yeah, like uh, I'm, I'm looking at everybody and kind of like, yeah, this was kind of obvious. Why are we even asking this question? <laughs> mm. sort of but thing. then Bastille is kind of new to things, right? So I know, I know, which is why she's not actually being mean about it. She's just looking a bit bored. Okay. How many? Next. We know one has breached this world, and that's our mission, which we will happily die to solve. Yeah, how many look around there? <laughs> As you said, like we'll happily die to solve. I just look at you and like speak for yourself. <laughs> like skydiving, like that that monkey gif where it's like um... <laughs> awkward. Like, I beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah, like, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah. What else is it? Sorry. Like. Um... Uh, yeah. Just uh, just casually. How many? If dinner comes and interrupts or whatever, that's fine. You it know, does not. Kind of oh, that's true. They wouldn't interrupt him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I'll casually just ask, so how many are there? Yeah. He kind of like looks off to the side and down as if he's thinking. And he's like, I'm not what I would call a scholar of such things myself, my... My lure keepers deal with this information. If you wish, no. after our meal, you can be 
fashioned with such information from our records. Wow. Uh, thank him. Well, thank don't you. tell me. Yeah, tell him. <laughs> uh, yeah, just thinking carefully here. You can't just stand up and stuff. Um, got to act properly. Just Try to, it. Uh, see what happens. Yeah, just to the best deal. Oh, do, right? No way. That's <laughs> embarrassing. There you. There you are. Also, right this back. is for you, Kay. This is what I was laughing at the other day, and it just. <laughs> 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 Uh, let's say thank you that would be of um, tremendous service possibly to the world as we know it and he kind of just um, like, kind of waves his hand as if yes yes that's fine you know like no need to yeah. oversell it and he says um, whether or not this information is useful is less so important as to what happens next with the abyssal breach mm. agreed and they kind of just they kind of just um almost like like kind of staring off into like the middle of the table you know mm -hmm. and then uh, you hear like a kathunk of the doors behind them and he kind of straightens up a bit and looks and says, finally, under his breath, and uh, in comes like massive like platters of like loads and loads and loads of um, like food, uh, various um, like kind of hot meats, uh, bunches of like fruit and stuff. Um, yeah, that's a massive spread that gets put out, and all of it looks really, really, really fresh. Um, except the meat, that looks really cooked. Um, <laughs> no, like, really bad. like it'd be too bad if it was just like here is an actual bull running around the room. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's a whole bunch of stuff, and he says, "Please, manners are secondary to consumption." And he kind of just nods at everyone, and then he just like tears a leg off some dead animal that has been burnt and starts <laughs> just munching into it. Wow. Well, I don't need to be told twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's loads and loads of fruit specifically as well. I am loads of varying fruit. And yeah. Anyone that tries any of that, it, it tastes amazing. Yeah, I, I think it, this is just gonna boil down to a good old fashioned Crumbar V Kitty in battle. <laughs> well you're already both behind the king, so Jesus then <laughs> Bitch has got some catching up to do. <laughs> Oh dear. But yeah, so anyone do anything of note for the meal? Because I don't feel like to describe hours of eating. Um, but. Yeah, no, I'll wait patiently. I, I would say it, it probably definitely takes like a, at least an hour, right? At least. Um, for him to like happily feel seated in that. And he's possibly got like, you know, <laughs> like a pile of grapes near him. That he's just slowly picking at, and kind of like yeah. almost like absentmindedly like rolling them in his hands, and then just eating them like he's remembering what they're for after a while, and then he looks around and he says, "Are you seated?" Always. That's a bit of a personal question. Um, I'll just be like lie back and like lie back and oh, not lie back, so I'll <laughs> sit back in my chair and just be like. That was some good food. I'm glad you approve. Most of it was a uh, grown here in Forge or hunted locally. Mm. And he's like pushes another handful of grapes in his mouth. Grape juice all over his beard. Nom nom nom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else? Or is everybody sitting quiet no. at the table? Thank you. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah, Donna tries patient. Yep. Are you certainly very Kitty. hungry? Thank you for that. You're welcome. Are you Kitty? Any anything to say to the king, or are you sitting quiet? I'll just 
look over, still trying to stuff food into mm -hmm. my face, like, lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if you're still like kind of eating, it says, by all means, feel free to continue. I will have the food left here. And he kind of just still, you know, toys with his grapes in his hands. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Sorry. Yep. That's what I've said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn it, Ryan. It's almost like role playing's a test of character, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's okay. It's for the soundboard for like eventually when I die, people can piece together the hilarious phrases from all the sound bites they've got of me on YouTube. Plays with grapes. Plays with the grapes in his hands. Yeah. So, yeah, after like maybe like a minute of just Kitty still munching away, I. <coughs> He he says, "You've had business. You've wishes. You've wished to discuss with me. You've wished that I empty the armies of forge to support the Golden Citadel." Are you talking behalf of the Gold Worm? That would be weird. Yeah, uh, reach you what up. Take last one. Yes, uh, they need all the help they, they can, and your help would be immensely useful to them. And you say that this initial quest into the abyss was given to you by the Great Cold Worm. What's his actual name again? Odyssea. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, was it? I, I, I think it was the Great Gold Worm that told us to go down there originally. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah, you remember you, was, was, walked, yeah. you, you picked up Eremus was. in the tower. You went down yeah. to the, the water line and walked all the way like west to Glitterhagen. Got in, met Eric, right? Went into uh, the uh, the Order Hall there. And yeah. he was upstairs and he's like, hello, everybody. Like Hercules Zeus style. Um, and he's, you know, had food with yeah, him as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great Gold Worm asked us to investigate uh, that, and we went there with a detachment with him. Um, and we were swamped with demons. We barely made it out. If it wasn't for Gil, we wouldn't have made it out. And this Gil, yeah. you say, is the son of the Great Gold Worm? Yes. So we believe. Yeah. Uh, okay, nods. Are you gonna say something there, Crumbar? No, I just like so we believe. It's like, well, you know, that would be like, yep, I'm his son. Yeah, we didn't do any genetic tests. <laughs> yeah, that's what I made it about. I mean, but I really like, think it's something. Fighting the demon. Can we get a swab <laughs> there, Gil? Sorry, it's unrelated. <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you can sit there and says. You can imagine the weight behind my decision in this matter. Okay, just leave that hanging. Uh, it's worrying to send a substantial det uh, det detachment mm -hmm, yeah. of your troops uh, so far away, you understand, but you'll be saving, you'll be helping to save everybody here if you can. I ask you then, why me and not Magna? When he says that, I'm just do like... He's still looking at his hand with his grape in it as well when you're saying that, like he's not looking at anyone. Um, when he says Magna, I'll just kind of like, you just see me kind of like, you know, bang my hat, like my fist on the desk and be like, because Magna is a useless king. That's a personal opinion. <laughs> uh, the reason not Magna is because we weren't asked to, uh, to get uh, Magna. We were asked to go for the dragons and ask yourself along the way. Uh, that's not as good, but yeah. <laughs> so I am a convenient stop along your yeah. journey. He just says he's still looking at this grape turning it over in his hand. 
Crumbar stand up and just be like, and then, like look, like looking at the king and just being like, "You are a king that leads a great army. You have stood stood here past the undermarch. That takes you know power. You do not hide on an island where you control the sea. You can make a difference." And he looks up, like as like as soon as you like stood up, like he his eyes would have like darted to you. Still kind of, you know, hand fondling this grape. And he, uh, <laughs> he kind See of if stares. we still had the shame box, Mark Ryan. I know, right, I know. Why do you think I had to go? And, uh, <laughs> if I was edging too close to it myself. But yeah, uh, he, um, he kind of looks at you and he says, Your silver tongue undercuts your golden master. And he kind of motions to the seat again with his, like, nod. I'll, uh, sit down and there's just, like, a kind of... Almost, like, a look, like, not not almost, but there is, like, a kind of look of confusion, because Crumber's like, I know those I words, know. but I have no idea what the fuck you meant. Mm. <laughs> and we're there together. Mm. Yeah. And... For anyone struggling to understand what that phrase means, it means it's all nice and well being nice with words with me when you serve the great gold worm. Um, but yeah, so I can sit there and you sit back down, you said, sorry, or you stay standing? Mm. Yeah, sit, or you gesture towards the seat, so yeah, mm. sit back down. Kind of he's saying don't be over dramatic, is really what he was kind of saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. And he says, uh, I do not wish the world to become endangered by demons. This is far from my desires. My first service is to the dwarven people. I am their king. Magna is no king to the dwarves. When he says that, I just die. He is no king to the orcs either. Indeed. And he kind of like, just kind of, as if agreeing with you, kind of nodding, kind of bobbing his head in a way. Um, and what of the orcs? Do you plan on seeking them out too? To unite them? This thought has crossed my mind. I've been very good so far. Unite. Well, we did unite them, mind you. <laughs> uh, last time we met them. <laughs> All into one big demon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hulking Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that be what he means. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> you said um, that, but then you absolutely massacred him. So it wasn't. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so heroic deeds aside, yeah. Um, Cromber says, obviously, it has crossed his mind. Is that? Mm. The. The matter is complex, unfortunately, as much as it would be simple to just issue the order that the Dwarven army marches upon the Abyss. What would you need to make it happen? And kind of a he squashes the grape that's in his hand. Ow. And he says, <laughs> Two armies. And he kind of just laughs once at that. And then, like, uncomfortably shifts in the chair a bit. And then just, like, wipes his hand to the side and then gets more grapes and starts eating them. And after he munches a couple, he turns back and he says, The. The problem I face in this decision is that if I issue this order, you will go off looking for dragons and then forge becomes a vulnerability. Mm. 
Hmm, I'm guessing he's on a bit of vulnerability from dragons. Don't know. You'd ask him, right? Hmm. Hmm. Vulnerable to what exactly? The dwarves have many enemies. Some ancient, some new. This pretender King Magna wishes to rule the world. Are we not in the world? Does he think he rules us here in Forge? He has done nothing for us. A lot of the kingdoms have the same opinion, a similar opinion. Okay, like uh, uh, nods slowly to that. And he says, and also, cousin to this one, and he motions towards Kitty, their people are at constant conflict in the Dwarven territories. We could approach them as well. You think you can end centuries long war between the Dwarves and the Dark Elves? Oh right, the Dark Elves, right. I thought you were just meaning Elves in general. Um, no, because the Elves in general aren't at war with the Dwarves. Officially, right, there's no, no war. Yeah. No, just because just obviously you point because they pointed at Kitty. Yeah, is it cousin to this one? Oh, right, 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 right. right. I Probably just, got five yeah. minutes after dinner. We could give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, that's fine then. That's fine then because I can now just bring up. And it's like, well. I have this sword. Slams on table. <laughs> <laughs> I have this sword and this bit of paper. Um, I'd be like, well. We did. We we brought you information on what we found the dark, the dark elves doing, just uh, you know outside a gate, a uh, door that led to forge. In fact, and then like I just kind of like look over to Kitty. I'm like, you took some uh, scribes, didn't you? No. Oh. You bet. <laughs> oh, rubbing. Yeah. And I was just, I was just like, go, Kit, Kit, a really mean look. I'll give you a scathing look back. It's like two, like two siblings at the dinner table, isn't it? When it's like, yeah, but she did it too. And it's like, no, it didn't. Stamps food <laughs> on their table. <laughs> well, while they're doing that, can I, in response to, do we think we could end centuries of war? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just clench my fist aggressively and say one way or another thinking about killing every goddamn drow and then I'll produce the uh, the fragment of the throne with the well, he puts his hand up, see when you say draw he'll put his hand up and he looks towards Kay and he says you would keep his civil tongue at my civil table no it's well, cool, we call it drow as well <laughs> and then he kind of just nods and he goes in that case speak your mind. Uh, yeah, I produced the fragment from my mm -hmm. pouch of the throne with the uh, hieroglyphs or whatever kind of strange language. You mean of the sarcophagus? Yeah. yeah the sarcophagus. We found this in their territory. And he just looks and says, You found your rock in a cave. Uh, and I kind of turn it to the face where the the strange writings on it, and I say, "It's a language in a tongue that none of us can speak." And I do not recognise this. I see. Perhaps this is something to show those scholars post meal. And he kind of nods at you. You don't recognise it either. And he kind of like raises an eyebrow and he says, "I am currently sat at my dining table." Hmm. I'll turn it to my face and just uh, put my elbow on the table and kind of just look at it from like a couple of centimeters away and focus on that while everyone else is eating. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> is there is there anything left to eat? I mean, between me, the dwarf, and <laughs> Kitty, I'm pretty sure we could have eaten them all out of resources. I think the uh, the staff know well enough to keep them well fed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Big mama. Mm. So, yeah, he's kind of sat there and he says, 
if in some way you had a miracle that could correct the slight these dark elves have against the dwarves, that would be very welcome, and I could more easily send armies. However, the threat to forge is still great at present. Fuck off, I'm not using Wish on some Dark Elves. Oh. You also don't have to. Like, he, I mean, he's just telling you it's a miracle because he doesn't expect it to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Not because he's saying, I know you got a Wish Sword because I'm from Metagamed. <laughs> I don't even know how. No, I do because I'm attuned to it. Yeah, you're attuned. You know. Um, yeah. You know, you can spend um, the fate of your people in whatever way you wish. Uh, <laughs> That's heavy. Isn't it? Sorry, two seconds. I'm choking on a. He's choked up about it again. Oh no! <laughs> but yeah, so. He cut off when he said I'm choked upon it, and it sounded like <laughs> it the sea. <laughs> like... Sorry, I was choking on a grape. <laughs> um. <laughs> Great idea. Anyway. You know, you're supposed to cut them in half if you struggle with them, fool. If you have a channel. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> but yes, so, back in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a dwarf here. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess it would just be a case of waiting until dinner's over to show the whatever bit of rock Bastille's got to the scholars, see if that will help. But so, Is there anything else you want to say to the king? Mm, not currently. Um, oh, in fact, I'll just, in fact, I will just say, like, speaking of your scholars, did you did you pass on the information about what we found? He's looking at you and he says, All relevant information has been relayed to those I deemed suitable. And he just nods at you. Did they have anything to say on the matter? You may consult with them after the meal. I'll make sure to do that. Thank you, King. He kind of nods. And he says, Is there anything in light of what I have said here that you wish to ask of me? I would make sure you say it now. This is not likely to be a common occurrence. Hmm. Good. I mean, can any of you think of another way that we can convince them to take the boost down with us? The thing is, you aren't going loose. down with them. What, sorry? You aren't going down with them, though. You are going no, north. No, want them to go on the zone. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 meant, I meant the general us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> great gold to order us. Yeah, they're all there. <laughs> ask him about the white dragon now. Yeah. Is that for the scholars? But I think... Uh, Ask him if he knows where the white dragon is. So are you doing that, or is yeah? Are you prompting other people to me, do that? Me, me, yeah. yeah <laughs> where is the white dragon? And then he kind of like he looks at you, reach, and he says, and he shakes his head. And you can see he's he's clearly just muttered the dark days under his breath. And he, his eyes go slightly wider at this, and he says, "I have tasked people." with the relevant skills to try and track the movements of the five. But it is not an easy task, unfortunately. Five. Does the five include the golden, by the way? No. Oh, I was just wondering there. Right. <laughs> no. As chromatic as it? Yes, five exactly, chromatic. yeah. So right, cool. red, black, green, blue, and white. Right. Whereas, like, the silver is gold, Bronzes, brasses, they're all different. So, he kind of, he says, these 
northern problems are very difficult to engage with. Why do you think I built a kingdom into a mountain? But I know from just dwarven history that dwarf, like the general's like stance on dragons. Hey, uh, wait, you're all history. We'll see. Yay. Uh, I'm curious to what the bronze and silver dragon are. I'm actually wondering why do we need a red one or just get yeah, bronze or silver or whatever else? Can mm -hmm. if you right. other ones? Yeah, yeah, this is why I'm wondering because yeah. obviously they might be a bit more mm. easier to talk to. Hel uh, yeah, helpful, so easier. Getting barbecued. So yeah, Bastille, you know that um, the the five and dwarfs don't get on just because the five serve themselves, right? Like it'd be different if, for example, the like the red needed something that wasn't just the instinct to destroy, right? Yeah. Um, or the the white wanted something that aligned with the dwarves. Maybe the white would help them, right? But then, mm -hmm. as soon as their interests diverged, yeah, they wouldn't care. So, to a dwarf, maybe that level of, oh, we are in this deal together, we won't kill each other, good. And then as soon as the deal's over, they're like half the dwarfs have been eaten, and it's like, oh, wait, mate, what's happened? Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Alright. So it's, they can work, like, they will do whatever suits them. Right, and if it happens that what suits them is exactly what you need, great. But uh, yeah. Okay, if I if I'm sensing this kind of tension, of uh, like an some kind of like an unwillingness to to make bargains into these creatures, then I'll I say tracking. Did you have them slain? Okay, he says that implies that we capture dragons. Hmm. Let's see. What is so your... basically like he's, he's he's basically saying like that that would be a folly to even attempt to treat them like prey. Yeah. Yeah. He's not saying he hasn't tried. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying that you know why why would we do such a thing that may result in dwarven deaths? Um, but yeah, he says. And what would be the purpose of this? Um. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to read the room here. In all honesty, I've been away for a while, and I guess I'm trying to work out um, whether you'd be open to a deal with them. Uh, it seems like... He grips his cup to the point where it disfigures it. Yeah. When you say that, like his goblet gets like ever so slightly crushed a little in his hand. I mean, hell, Cro I mean, Crumbar doesn't even want to do it, so. And he uh, <laughs> he sits it down and like pulls his hand off of it and then like kind of just like flicks his hand a bit and he says, Why would I make a deal with a deceitful worm? For the greater good to cleanse this realm. Of fiends. Does this act also remove them from the world? It could do. I imagine they'd be at a place of weakness by the time this is all said and done. Once thousands of demons have had their say, I we'll do say we make a deal. I believe that on their worst day, it would be better than twice your best. And I mean no offence to you by this. Hmm. Yes, they are. They are power incarnate. For all of their machinations of evil upon this land, they remain. Do you think the land devoid of good people trying to remove their stain? Hmm. Mountains yeah. and blood is what he says at that point. And then he pours out oh, wow. the, he pours the water out on the floor from the other mug and then 
like pours his uh, mead from his crushed cup into it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, dwarf runs up and obviously cleans the water spillage. <laughs> so mm. yeah. Cool. Mm. So that's off the table. I think. I mean, I'm glad I thought of that though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good. It's a good, good interaction. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I just don't know how we're gonna convince them to work with dragons. Yeah, this is like the like the solar eclipse of when the dragons would be at their weakest mm. if they were to help yeah. us and get shredded by demons. It's but... not the worst thing, right? Like, yeah, like put dragons in front of demons, let them fight demons, but then why would they? Why wouldn't they just wait for everybody else to get weaker? Yeah, yeah, they're very smart. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and statistically okay. very charismatic. <laughs> oh, that too. That too. <laughs> they're um, pretty much better than us in every way. <laughs> so the problem is, right? They're on the icon list, right? Which makes them icons, as dumb as yeah, that sounds. Like the, the Elon Musk of dragons. Which one? <laughs> I don't know if I want to have that conversation, but yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, when you look at this list, right, people listed on this list don't have stats, so go figure. Forces of nature. And they are at the bottom of that list. The five. Oh, is it, is it hierarchy in, in order of, like, strongest to no, weakest? most oh. definitely not. I was going to say. Okay. Because that would put the Crusader Knight, who the party have met, who is a Wood Elf Lady, that would put her stronger than the God Dragon. The worm. She yeah. was awesome though, because she had the wee gnome who had the box. Yes, of the bag of but I don't know if that's what considers her to be strong as her gnome buddy. <laughs> like he wasn't like an attachment <laughs> yeah, or a magic item. The secret to her strength. <laughs> I mean, maybe right, but maybe that's something worth picking up, right? Because I mean, you did meet three people, one of them being. Who exactly? Yeah, this is not actually a very good point. Um. Mm. And yes, I did literally just sip my tea there. Um. <laughs> well. I'm trying to think, and um, it's like, <clears> hmm. <throat> You... I've got something. Once so, you, like, so, yeah. do, your thing. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, basically, because I mean, I'm wanting to basically try and find a way to be, say to him, like, well, we met the Crusader Knight, who has also gone down to help us at the Abyss. So, was... and they came from the north. So, and more importantly, who was with the Crusader Knight that wasn't the gnome? The bag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're on about the dwarfy guy um, who was in Golden Order armor that wasn't Golden Order exactly. Nope, wrong way around. The gnome who was in gnome nope. armor but was... Nope. No, the dwarf that was in mm. dwarf armor but mm -hmm. was in Golden Order. Was part yes. of the Golden Order, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, General Commander Kiel of the Royal Dwarven Army, yes. Yes, thank you. That guy. Oh. Yeah. Literally, the head of the Dwarven army was travelling with the head of the Wizard King's army and a random yeah. gnome. <laughs> and a bag. Oh, and a bag. Sweet, sweet bagness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm right in saying that they all went down to the abyss, didn't they? Yeah, they were heading that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will bring up. Yeah. Um... I'll be like, not to uh, undermine your judgment, but you worry about sending your army down there. On the way up here, we met, did you say, was it the general or the captain? I mean, he's, he's definitely in the NPC list, right? 100% is in that NPC list. Yeah. He's totally all have access to NPC handout, game info, NPC list. Like, yeah. Oh, right, Google Docs one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one. Um, do, 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 like, 
six seconds and anyone else that isn't Shan have any thoughts about this particular connection? <laughs> All the people that happen to actually be in those sessions? Please don't demonetize my video. Sorry, there we go. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, I know what I'm going to say. So, uh, on our way up here, we met Commander General Keel, and he was traveling with... Uh, yeah, wrong list. He was traveling with the Crusader Knight, and they have both decided to go to the Abyss to help. Well, I kind of looks up at that, and he sits his like cup down very carefully, and uh, like he kind of like puts his hand in his other hand and kind of sits on like his his belly, and he just kind of looks over at you slowly, and he says. You met my commander general, did you? Yes, we uh, came across. It, it was when we came across an ab abysmal gate thing. Portal, yeah, it was. Yeah. It uh, was in the Valley of Savine, yeah. Yeah. Um, we were remember, fighting with it, yes, yep. it was open. Yeah. Yep, remember you went, you used hammered back to it with the hammer of travel, and then yes. you used then yes. dropped into the middle of a massive fight. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, so yes, we met them while closing a one of the hell portals um, just south of here. Okay, I slowly know it's. Yes, I see. Did he speak any more of the matter to you? What ma the matter of what? I'm oh, sorry. Well, literally what you've just told yes, me. Yes, enough. No. Yeah. Only that he knew it was very important for as many people as possible to go south and fight the demons. And he just looks at you. And he says, I see. It's also obviously evil. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, would it come as a surprise to you that he asked to be dismissed some time ago from service to me? Clearly, he's done this so that he can go and fight at the abyss without the need of, no offense, your approval or command, I guess. Our obligation to me, it would seem. Mm. Yes, like, he, starts, yes. like, he just runs a hand through like he's kind of beard as if he's looking for his chin. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, I didn't, I don't know, I don't know the friendship you had with him. However, I, I would like to think if he was your commander general, you valued his opinion on war efforts. He deems it. He deemed it well enough to leave his king to go and fight. Yes, and you tell me that the Crusader Knight of the Royal Army of Magna has apparently taken up arms with my former commander general. This seems yes. suspicious to me. Suspicious? How? Or why? Would you not think the head of your army in league with the head of your rival? Would, do you not see the suspicion in this? How do I know that Kiel was not a spy for Magna? Or indeed that he has approached this Crusader Knight to spy for her master? And how do we know this elf is not indeed a spy for another Best master. Best way to find out would be to ask him. And did you ask them? We had no questions to ask him. But we know where he is. <laughs> we know where they both are. Yeah. We know where they both are. 
His obligation to me is no more. Cool. He has served for many years as my commander general. To ask this of me meant his honor, and he walked away from that. And I was happy to allow him, for the request did not come lightly. What good is honor when the world would burn? This, I believe, is why he asked for this of me. Then I hope that shows you the gravity of the situation we're in. It shows me that I am without a commander general of my armies. Um, or some time though. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone else? I, d I don't know what I can say that's not going to piss him off. He's not, uh, he's not specifically pissed off yet, right? He's no. he, he crushed a cup, yeah, but, right? I'm, but I'm, yeah. you've got I'm, commander I want to keep it that way. You've got commander general waiting for your army though down south. He doesn't really though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if if I see him, he doesn't him. know that. <laughs> Gets him through the fuck that dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> no, Reach has got a good point because I'm sure if the dwarven army went down, he'd be reluctant. They said to... they were going down. We went down as well, but it was a different time and they weren't there. But technically, they should have arrived after us. But... Yeah, it was because it's because you travelled by teleporting hammer and then like yeah. the mm -hmm. the prismatic order. Like there was a lot of teleporting. They had to walk over horrible open and warped land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the thing, if the dwarf army showed up while he was fighting, then he'd be like, Ah, the king sees sense, I will rejoin him. Maybe, right? That's Maybe. Not what I know. So they not be allowed to. Yeah, like, but who knows, right? That's a thing that we don't know at that point, because that would depend on A, if Keel's still wow. there, right? Mm. And B, if the dwarf king would buy into that in the first place, because at the moment, his concern is Forge will be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. to other things that aren't just demons. Never mind you guys trying to like leash a dragon. <laughs> uh, so I think that um, the, the thing to identify in this if you had to like analyze it would be yeah. you need to, f not the fact that yeah the general uh, is fine, yeah great that guy that was dismissed earlier, go get him yeah cool. He doesn't really seem to mind that right? He's, his concern now is you say he's been canoodling with some elf you know, mm. the fact that this mm. it was the elf who was the right hand to King Magna. Who's a human centric leader. Yeah. Yet this they wood elf woman. And this like wood yeah. elf woman was his right hand man, air quote. Right? So that's weird in itself, but she was the head of the armies of the, the royal army, so she was clearly just good at her job. But then as we know, all elves are connected to the Elf Queen. That seems like a risk, considering mm. <laughs> it's a very open debate whether or not the Elf Queen is subject to the Wizard King, right? So we need to recently find a way to keep here protected while also he sends his army. I mean, he doesn't need to send them all. Mm. Um, I'll read into that, I guess. Do you, do you go, are you guys happy with me? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. batter in, yeah. batter in. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, speaking of, speaking of which, uh, in regards to mentioning dwarves that you, we encountered earlier, mm -hmm. let's say we slew a great many uh, dark elves on the way here, and we encountered a man of great prowess, a, a oh, dwarf. God, I forgot about him. You wouldn't recognize him, would you? What was the name of this dwarf? His appearance. Um, he seemed. Uh, I'll look at Crumbar. The only way to describe him, he seemed like some sort of paladin. A figure of great importance, perhaps. Very strong. And this dwarf. I don't know if we ever did. Did hmm? we ever show that little piece of stuff that we couldn't read? Yeah, yeah. I okay. tried, I tried, uh, what's uh, to the king? 
Uh -huh. yeah. If he knows somebody, one of his people that can identify what it is. Yeah, he said what. we'll take it to the scholars at some point okay. after. After dinner. Yeah, I'm also done that. Sorry. Basically, that. the what he really said was, "I'm not going to tell you I can't read that." <laughs> insecure. Yeah, that's. It's not insecure, it's just I'm not going to say what I can't do. I'm going to let you go get those answers from people that I employ to be smarter than me. That's, wow, well, that's, that's quite a nice little detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I like that a lot. <laughs> I am not so unsubtle in my ways sometimes. <laughs> but I'll obviously then tell you I was very proud of it later, so here we are. Yeah. I'm actually just kind of looking quickly back on my notes because I did write his name down. Um, it is here somewhere. But yes, uh, does MD actually remember his name, or did you just not get it? I, 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 I wrote down Greg Slayer in my notes accidentally instead of his actual name. Yeah, it's because that was on the statue. Hmm. What did you write down? Grave Slayer. Grave Slayer. Hmm. Where is my later notes? So that was... What session would that have been? I'm kind of half talking to myself here. I'm not actually yeah. asking this. Actually, you're totally talking to yourself here. But okay. 41, 42, 43. Right, so it's in one of these. Let me just free these from the thing. 39, 40, 41. I've wrote down. A whole bunch of stuff about the Arcane Anvil for 41, so it was definitely after that. I've got Lord mm. Bramber Deep Main, yep, so after that. 42, yous are still there, blah blah blah. 42 again. <laughs> I wrote sad horses, is what I've wrote <laughs> for my notes for session 42. Uh, anniversary edition. And then I don't see the entire notes for 42. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, yeah. that's it. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, the notes aren't necessarily the same as the plan documents. I write a plan and a notes page, and the <laughs> notes page is the stuff I write down during the game, and the plan's the stuff I do before the game, yeah. fair enough. However much those two intersect? You, well. Rarely, at best, to be honest. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so do you want to try and have a go at trying to describe this dude? And we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, so he's... but he had been locked up for a while. Um, yeah, so I know I, I know exactly what he looks like, but what's worthy of note? Because obviously I could say, like, oh, his hair looked like this, but why does that make him special? Mm. Uh, what makes him special? He had a, he, didn't he have, like, a really noteworthy axe? Or at least a giant one? Eh, uh, did he, though? Let's see. Uh, let me have a quick nosy at his character sheet and we'll see what was noteworthy about him. I'll show you some art with him as well, right? Because he was... I yeah, thought it was pretty cool. Um, was it was a cleric or something as well? Yes. It was It was unclear, right? What it was. Yeah. Um, but he did mention Hela, right? Mm -hmm. So he clearly had some interest in religion in some way. Here's his full art. I love his his little portrait is so good because it was just I don't know if I can actually I'll need to steal it differently. So I was thinking with the axe, it's like I don't know, it's like looks like platinum or something. This portrait's like so serious. Look at it. <laughs> Drunk, it's nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh depends. But yeah, I don't see why you just couldn't describe that. Yeah, yeah, and those insignias are there, right? <laughs> On him in character. Uh, sure. I mean, they look like spades from a deck of cards, to be honest. But yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll say, uh, you wouldn't happen to be missing a... And then I'll describe uh, about this tool. I'll describe the shape of his armor. Silvery... Sorry, I'm colorblind, so this is mm -hmm. like... That's fine, yeah. Tricky, but... Yeah, I'll say it's silvery and I'll describe the icons on there, the symbols, and how he... Um, he he moved like a blur, an expert, uh, perhaps from your army. Kind okay, of like he has a, a, a good think to himself. Um, he's gonna like scratches his beard. 
Bear with me while I clear my own throat. <laughs> Not somebody else's, you've made that clear your own. <laughs> you imagine he's like getting into characters, like, <clears throat> clearing <laughs> like clearing other people's <laughs> thoughts would be a weird ass thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I know, but I, I just, you know, figured it out. That's okay. And if there's a. It sounds to me as if you're describing one of. The warrior is in service to our goddess Hela. Mm -hmm. That mention Hela, yeah, Hela. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's right. I okay, kind of nods and says, "And what of this? They are paladins of a sort." And he kind of like nods towards like Crumber and Reach and well, basically everything that isn't past Hela, I guess, because I mean technically. He kind of nods to the group because he just assumes you're all paladins. I I just give like uh like really affirmative like just a kind of head nod, just like a hmm. Mm. Well, I just thought maybe I'd let you know that your your man is free. Free. Yes, we we released him from the clutches of dark elves. Do you say it that way? <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, Stu, so we're getting Stu. feedback, and Ketty, we're also getting feedback, so we're getting like feedback on feedback. Yep. I think it's because I tried to speak at the same time. Okay, as well. go for it. Speak now. I just sort of like stop eating and go, "We? <laughs> you mean me?" <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It was all me. It was a very heroic moment, quite frankly. <laughs> Running up to him, arms open wide. Puppy! <laughs> <laughs> Dad, is that you? Doing I, I just, I feel like I look at uh, Bastille very differently now. I feel like I see this <laughs> as Bastille. And I'm not angry with myself for it at all. <laughs> it's just, it's the way you're saying stuff. I love it. Uh, it's very Scourge. <laughs> which is a very good Warforge name, to be honest. It so really is, actually. Also, just this. It's just so good. It's so good. <laughs> anyway. Yes, it is. And you had to free this <laughs> Hellblade. Oh, you got cutting out a bit. Uh, what can I do about that? I can, I can yeah, just repeat it. Sorry, what was that? And you had to free this Hellblade, you see. Well, not quite. He seemed, uh, well, frankly, he didn't want to work with us. He seemed perfectly happy in that little cell of his. Perhaps he was in the middle of a, some kind of scheme. I don't know how you operate, but I'm sure he would have been fine alone, but we just accelerated the process. I'm very curious as to learn of his movements. The hell blades are not under my command. Just like, uh, I'll send like shivers up my spine, like, oh, I'm in deep shit, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Are they allies? They are not enemies. Does that make them allies? I just nod and grunt. Mm. What else did you learn from this Hellbleed? <clears throat> Uh, okay. So no one, just to recall, no one has mentioned anything about this vampire guy yet, right? Well, Crumbar might have a little yeah. bit at the end. Yeah, that's been, it's been mentioned, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he had his heart set on this strange ritual involving these, and I wave the stone in my hand. <laughs> these. Remember this? <laughs> Please look at my rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a uh, Bastille's pet rock for the whole game, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Single-minded resolve. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And he says yes, and you said that there was some creature that was brought back 
in some fashion or released in some way from this still in prison. Yes, they're, ah, yes. Not, they're not a vampire. Yes, also new to me. He was no Dark Elf. But the Dark Elves uh, bent over backwards to facilitate his, uh, his awakening, I suppose. I see. Uh, great strength. He, he moved uh, imperceptibly fast. Uh, his magical prowess was something I almost reminded me of uh, Durath. Okay, now it's, he says, I see. Did you petition <laughs> him to support your <laughs> fight? <laughs> well, we were, he like we were takes a there. drink as he says that. Ahem. <laughs> Yeah, I, I laugh to myself and I say, well, we were getting there. And then, and I look at Crumbo and I'll go quiet. And then he, uh, he showed us whose side he was on. And it wasn't ours. Oh. I'm just, and he swigs I'm more like, booze. But, oh, just... he's getting drunk now. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like kind of looking back at uh, Basti, like, why are you staring at me? Uh, so when he turned Crumba, was that a spell or did he bite him? Yeah, He didn't bite him. He just kind of okay. looked at him and then told Crumbar to be his friend and go fight his former friends, yeah. and that worked. And Crumbar's like, yeah, sounds great, mate. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm looking <laughs> at you, because I'm like, it wasn't me doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kind of explaining what the pa uh, how the vampire, well, how the dude mm -hmm. showed us he wasn't going to be our friend, basically. <laughs> to be fair, you did attack him. To be fair, he was in a coffin. So... <laughs> oh yeah, I think he might have just saw us attacking his like occultists and then just jumped in. Mm. Oh, fair point. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're the other side of the coin, right? <laughs> 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 oh dear. What was that thing about, like, the bad guys never figure out they're the bad guys? They think somebody yeah. else is the bad guy, so they probably thought we were the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad guys never think they're the bad guy. For, I dream, you know, I dream my brain hurts now. His... What's she saying uh, if you've got skulls all over your armor? <laughs> <laughs> um... They probably got pissed off we interrupted their resurrection thing. Mm. I mean, fair, right? Man, mm -hmm. imagine that guy fighting at the abyss for you, man. Oh. <laughs> Tease. <laughs> I just say th all things are possible, right? Yeah. Um, is like, okay, I use the sword to go back to then. <laughs> Reset. <laughs> Listen, listen, mate, mate, listen. Could we maybe, you know, did never mind. So anyway, back in the room <laughs> with the dwarf king. We drunk Donner. Uh, I guess I'll finish off. You know, I'll tell him the story of our fight with the vampire guy, mm -hmm. and I'll just try and entertain him more than because uh, I feel like we've gotten so much out of him. Mm -hmm. I'll just try and re regale the details and stuff. And okay. just chat. Yeah. Anything in particular as the core, bit, like subject? Anything you're highlighting, or? Um, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll tell him about the, the plants, the plant spell. Okay. Does that mean? Oh that, my God, the plants. Does does, <laughs> yeah. does does Arya weigh in when that's mentioned? Like, how is it presented, Bastiel? How does that come up in conversation? And sheer fucking terror. Yeah, accidentally plants. Because <laughs> I want to know how Arya takes that being shared. So I want to know how Bastille presents it. Um, I'll present it as, um, like, um, kind of like not being familiar with our own strength and how much we actually have, and how at a flick of Arya's wrist she accidentally changed the landscape, and it was it was funny. But it wasn't a problem for us because we're badass. 
I'll change this as like during this I think he'll look at like Aryan and say Is this true? Do you contain this power? Learning more I'm learning more and more about my powers every day. I see. We will speak after this if you will make the time. Mm. I like nod my head in a kind of respectful way because I'm like, you know, a bit of a big deal. Mm. I kind of kind of nods there. And else got anything else you want to say to the king? Well, I'm more wanting. I'm more wanting to speak to the uh, scholars because mm -hmm. I think they'll give us more information. Mm. Okay. Well, anything else then? Because we can wrap up the king's uh, dinner. Yeah, I could have said absolutely everything. Oh. I cool. could have thought of. I, in that case, then he just like stands up, and all the like servants immediately like rush to start clearing away plates and stuff. And he says, <laughs> "You will have my answer by the end of two D." And then he walks away. Just not. Bye, King. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he walks away, and yeah, I guess he's all get up and leave. The attendant is at the door again, he pushes open the doors and just stands there saying, I will escort you back to more comfortable chambers for you to rest. Thank you. And then obviously as you all kind of like walk out, one of the uh, attendants stops Arya and says, If you could come with me, please. I, I nod and follow. And Do I, they I notice? Don't know. Is uh, are you likely to notice that, or are you belly full crumber? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 quite digested. Uh, now, they're so. not trying to do it in a secret way. It's literally just they're taking mm -hmm. her a different way. When and so, Ari, you've just said like, oh, okay, yeah. Just lead the way. Right. Mm. I've not said anything, I just noted, yeah, nodded and followed. Mm. I'll just kind of maybe catch it out, like, my eye and be like, where are you taking her? Yeah, the dwarf's already I just like... say, to talk, and, you know, throwing it over my shoulder while I'm already going. <clears throat> mm. Well, sorry, that kind of crackled up for me. I said, for a talk. See you guys later. Mm. And off she walks. And, uh, uh, okay, she seems oddly happy about this. Yep. And oh, then, no, just which like, have Crumber mm. like kind of. No, like it was meant to be rushed, not happy, but okay. Mm. Oh, is it rushed? Um, okay, well, either way, it's not like. Yeah, I guess I just like. Mm. I mean, I mean, let's put it this way: like, I, I may be a girl that like grew up in the woods and everything, but I don't keep a king waiting. But mm -hmm. then again, you're like, oh, we're finally having wine, eh? Mm -hmm. So I think we've and kind I of treated it on the floor. This, uh, I think we've kind of treated our, our interactions with him slightly differently. Just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. So yeah, I think what um, we have was we fade out on like maybe Crumbar's like look of confusion. Um, <laughs> and we'll... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more just like, where are you taking her? Is she going to be okay? And then I mean, well, remember I last can time. I fire oh, from my fingers. Don't you think I can take care of myself? Yes, but last time someone took away a member of our, par our party, they came back and they weren't a cat anymore. <laughs> what are you hoping that she was back <laughs> as a cat? Like <laughs> the only thing. No, Let's because it, no, I'm because you come menu. back as a permanent pantheria. So, not taking the step on Scott's recollection, but Decana took you away after a, you know, <laughs> Justoria had her little moment with Kitty. So that's uh, really that's what you mean is I remember it, Ryan. What you mean is Decana pushed you through a tree, um, <laughs> and then yeeted also, herself away with lightning. Also, I'm I'm quite sure you know we we separated when you went with that little half orc lady or mm. whatever lady it was that was before the canna but yeah mm -hmm. for a while mm -hmm. so, yeah um, back in, i came back that would have been another time when one of us left and then stuff happened and no kittens have appeared since then so yeah. we're doing well 
I am. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I will see everybody back in 10 minutes, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, no worries. Right. Right, I'll catch you later. Bye. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.